Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. My first stop is Loveland Ski Area here in Colorado. Look at that video. They posted this to Twitter yesterday, testing out the snow guns. My friend Dustin Schaefer works up there, shot that video, and it's always cool seeing that this time of the year. Uh, Loveland, A Base, and even Keystone's been in the mix, Copper Mountain. They all try to open uh, early. Uh, at times it feels like a race, but I think they're just all waiting on colder overnight temps, and I do have that in my extended forecast, even some natural snow as well. So we'll look at that coming up, but again, that's Loveland ski area. Now this one, this is cool. Look at this, a touch of snow this morning at the top of Killington in the Northeast. Look at that, a little bit of snow um, out in the Northeast this morning. All right, let's go to water vapor. I'll give you the lay of the land. So oranges and reds on this drier air loft, your moistures and your whites and your blues. You can see this next storm system right here spinning. And it's being supported by the jet stream, and here it is, the storm track. Everything's sort of favoring Pacific Northwest and BC still. Now, this storm is not going to be major. It is minor. It will roll into the west, and it's basically going to be eaten up beneath this area of high pressure. But what this storm will do is help to increase the humidity across the west a little bit. And it may spark an afternoon shower or a shower, rain shower, snow shower across some of the higher peaks, but that is not the storm to watch. The one to watch is behind it, and that comes into the west 1017 and probably 1018. Um, and that's part of my bullet points this morning. I only have a couple of things that I'm really mentioning. The storm track continues to favor the same spots. The storm to watch is going to be 1017 and 1018. So let me walk you through this. Here's the humidity in the atmosphere. A slice of it all the way up through the, the all layers of the atmosphere. This is Vail Ski Area in Colorado. The timeline you read from right to left, so it's just the opposite of what you typically expect. But dry at first, green starts to increase, especially at 72 to 80 hours. And that would be representative of probably Sunday, Monday. We'll have an increase in cloud cover, maybe a rain shower, or snow shower over the high peaks with that kind of a pattern. That's that first air field pressure that's going to come through the west and kind of get eaten up. Uh, but then again, there's a stronger one coming down the road. And in fact, let me take you to Birth at Pass. So Birth at Pass snow forecast, you can see the odds all go up. They all increase around um, the 17, 18, 19, 21, and all the way through the 25th. The chances of snowfall start to increase. So the odds ratios go up. And again, that's Birth at Pass. And you'll see that in my forecast coming up. All right, I want to go back. And while we're here, I want to just talk about the smoke forecast. I've been showing this each day because it's still an issue. All right, so here it is. This is vertically integrated smoke. There's 24 hours into the future. There's 36 hours into the future. And there's 48 hours into the future. Still uh, wildfires in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, Montana. It looks like even California's got a couple of wildfires, flyers, uh, wild, wildfires. And all that smoke is just drifting over the top of that high pressure. Now, with that stronger storm coming around 10, 17, and 18, that would switch the pattern down the road and potentially help with this situation. What we need is moisture, and we might get some of that. Okay, let me just talk a bit about the jet stream. Here's the storm track. So 11.30 tonight, um, there's that area of low pressure starting to move into the west. You can see the dip in the jet stream. But again, it kind of gets eaten up. The northern branch rebuilds, kind of leaves that little low left for dead. All right, let's look down the street. Here's 1015, there's 1016, here comes our storm. Look at the dip in the jet. This one appears to go all the way through Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico intact. So this one's gonna have some precip with it as it looks right now. Let's look at that. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, there's your view. Friday morning. Friday afternoon, here comes our low into California. Again, it kind of gets left for dead, eaten up, but it does increase humidity. All right, there we go. 1014, 1015, here comes 1016, here comes our storm. 1016, 1017 into 1018, rolls across the Intermountain West, and look at the blue. It appears as though there is going to be some snow, and I showed you that yesterday. I had snow in my forecast yesterday, and there's still snow in my forecast for today, and here it is. Um, so this takes us all the way through 1019. Now remember, the bulk of this, almost all of it, falls 1016, 17, 1018, 1019, somewhere in that time frame. And there is a little bit to be had across Utah, across at the higher elevations, in Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and certainly in Colorado. If that front comes down the front range of Colorado, gets hung up on the front range high peaks, 
including birth and pass, I showed you the odds all going up, 10, 17, 10, 18, 10, 19, and beyond. And you can see the potential here for accumulation. And of course, there's going to be continued accumulation up in the parts of British Columbia. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.